and back to the show. Here we go. Sorry. Okay, uh, here are our objectives for 3.1. Okay, starting a new chapter of quadratic functions. Our objectives for today are to recognize characteristics of parabolas, to graph parabolas, determine a quadratic function's minimum or maximum, and solve problems involving a quadratic function's minimum or maximum. So you know anytime when it says that, it's just talking about word problems for the stuff we've already done. Okay, so really our top three are our main objectives, and number four is can you do a problem with words in it with one, two, and three. Okay, does that make sense? All right, recognizing characteristics of parabolas. First thing I want you to know, I'm just going to show you this page out of the book because it's really a beautiful drawing. Somebody did a really beautiful drawing on the computer. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this. What? You guys are so weird. Here's a parabola, okay? The axis of symmetry there's only one axis of symmetry. It's the line that divides it in half, basically. If I folded it along that axis of symmetry, each side would be right on top of each other. Okay? They would be matching. The general form of a quadratic looks like this. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is going to be greater than 0. Okay? Not greater than or equal, because if it was equal to 0, it wouldn't be quadratic. It would be linear. Okay? Um... Notice, please, that this one is saying that a is greater than or equal to 0, and how is this parabola opening? It's opening up, right? Notice this one is talking about when a is less than 0, and that's when it's opening down, okay? Still the same kind of things of, of axis of symmetry. Now, this one, the vertex is called the minimum point. Why is, it, why is that, you think? Why is this vertex called the minimum point? It's the lowest point of the graph, right? Why is this vertex called the maximum point? Highest part of the graph. That's not it's not any sort of trickiness or anything like that. It's pretty obvious why it's called that, okay? Um, <clears throat> I think this is pretty cool. I don't know if you can see it very well or not. It's talking about symmetry, okay, um, here. And if you actually draw a line right here, mirror actually is a mirror of itself. I think that's pretty cool. Okay. I just wanted to show you too. I think it's pretty cool. Okay. <clears throat> so if we're graphing quadratic functions in standard form, <coughs> wrong way, Tra the transformations, you already know that. We've already gone over this, um, not only just in this class in college algebra, but we went over it a whole lot in algebra too. Okay, so transformations is something you guys are really good at. Um, just to make sure, this is the parent function. This is a transformed function where h and k is the new vertex. See, vertex of h, k. It was at 0, 0, now it's at h, k. The h move is a horizontal shift, so it's moved left or right. And the k is a vertical shift, so it's moved up or down. Okay, same kind of thing here. It's just that the a is uh, less than 0 right here, so it's opening upside down. Again, we've talked about this even already this year and we talked about it a lot in Algebra 2. Okay, so if if I gave you a form like 2, um, let's see, if we're, if we're looking at this general form right here, if, it, if A is a 2, you know that that's a, a stretch or a shrink. Since it's a, two, it's a 2, you know it's a vertical stretch. If I said H minus 2 squared plus 3, you remember that it's moved to the left 2 or right 2? Which one do you think? If it's x minus 2 to the right 2, because the h is part of the formula, so h is, has a value of 2, okay? Plus 3, which me, would move it up 3, okay? Does that make sense? So now already, what did I just do with it? Oh, it's right here. So already we've recognizing, recognized characteristics of parabolas, including the vertex, including the axis of symmetry, noticing if the vertex is a minimum or a maximum. Um, and we've also talked about graphing parabolas with transformations. Okay.
Now they, I need you to be aware that this book, you know, when we, when I was just showing you the a times x minus h squared plus k, this book calls that standard form. Okay, we called it vertex form in Algebra 2. This book calls it standard form, so I just want you to be prepared for that when, if you're doing your homework and it asks for, like, to graph in standard form. You're not trying to put it into general form, which is what we called it. Excuse me, which was AX squared plus BX plus C, something like that. They call that general, general form. That's what we called standard form. So it's just a little bit of vocabulary issue right there. Um, let me just make sure that you understand that real quick. Um, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. This book calls that standard form. Okay. We called it vertex form, but they call it standard form. Okay. <clears throat> y equals a x squared plus b x plus c is general form. I think sometimes our book called that standard form. So I just wanted you to be clear about a vocabulary issue from high school algebra to college algebra. Okay. Now another thing I want you to be aware of is um, graphing parabolas in standard form. This is this is relatively easy for you guys. Okay. Figure out if there's a stretch or compression. Figure out where the vertex is, and you know the vertex is H K, the vertex. Okay, that's, a re that's relatively easy for you guys to do. Um, what sometimes is a little bit more difficult uh, for you guys, only because of the way that we kind of covered it in um, high school algebra 2, is for you to take the general form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, and graph that. Okay, what I do want you to remember, though, is c is the y-intercept. Okay, if I let x equal 0, that will give us the y-intercept, right? Well, if that's 0 and that's 0, because 0 squared or 0 times something is 0, then the y-intercept is going to be what c is. Does that make sense? Okay, the other thing is that the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex, is going to be negative b over 2a. Do you remember talking about that? Okay, x coordinate of the, v, the vertex is negative b over 2a, which means the y coordinate of the vertex is going to be the value of the function and negative b over 2a. So whatever you get for negative b over 2a, you just got to plug it back in for x to get y. But that that's, seems fairly straightforward to you, doesn't it? Okay. Um, now this is the y-intercept. You could find the x-intercept by letting this equal zero and solving the function. But typically, if you know the vertex and the y-intercept, you know enough about the fact that it's a symmetric shape that you can find another point in order to make the parabola. Okay? Do I need to do that for you, or are you okay? You're good? Okay. Um, so the last thing, the last objective that we have is to determine a quadratic's function's minimum or maximum. Okay? Well, if you know the vertex is at negative b over 2a, doesn't that help you determine the minimum or maximum? How do you decide if it's a minimum or a maximum? Well, does it open up or does it open down? If it's opening up, this is going to be a what? A minimum. And if it's opening down... A max. And how do you determine by looking at an equation whether it opens up or down? Do you remember? That's perfect. If A is greater than zero, it's going to be a minimum. And if A is less than zero, it's going to be a maximum. When A is greater than zero, it's the parabola is opening up. When A is less than zero, the parabola is opening down. So when you find this negative B over 2A and then the value of the function, like that, that gives you your point of your vertex. Deciding whether it's a minimum or maximum depends on the sign of A, either a positive or negative. Okay? Are there any questions? A lot of the applications that you're going to see, you know, they, they talk about solving problems involving quadratic functions, minimum or maximums. A lot of the word problems that deal with parabolas and quadratics typically have to do with a ball or a rocket. Okay? 
either a football is being kicked or a football is being thrown or a basketball is being shot or I don't mean to say shot at school, um, tossed into the basket um, or a rocket is being shot from a ship and try to hit another ship or something like that. Because also those are all pretty familiar quadratic functions. They make a parabola as their shape when, they, when they're flying through the air. Okay, so um, <clears throat> sometimes they'll, or most of the time they'll give you the equation that you need to use. Um, if they don't, then they typically give you some sort of formula to find your own um, equation. Um, but all the examples that I see in here, they give you the equation to use. And like I said, if they don't, they'll give you a general equation where you can substitute values in to be able to find your equation fairly easily. Okay, are there any questions about this first part of quadratics? All right, peace.